Hey guys, uh, I'm Chris Romano. I'm Duncan McLeod. And so our capstone game, Minutes to Midnight. Uh, for the game design capstone, we make three games in the span of two semesters. And uh, for this, we had about five weeks to design, develop, test, and, pr and uh, present a pretty much fully completed game. All right, and um, Chris and I weren't the only ones who worked on the game. Um, but Chris was the creator of the concept and did a lot of the game design and developing. Um, I collaborated on design and did the majority of developing. Um, and then we had Justin Yang, who was our artist. Um, Jonathan Lampron, who was our producer, he kept us in line and made sure we hit our deadlines and didn't slack off too much. Um, Peter Hurlbert uh, wrote our story and Reed Lockwood made the framework for our game. So a little bit about the game. Um, it's called Minister Midnight, and you play as the president of this nation, and you're thrown into this disaster scenario. And you're forced to, by talking to people, reading information, um, gain enough knowledge about your situation to make a final decision and decide whether or not to retaliate or to back off and let, it, let everything pan out. So it's a unique, a unique hybrid of classic gameplay with a modern experience. So what that means is it's a point and click game and there's a lot of classics like the Indiana Jones games and LucasArts games um, where you use what you see to solve puzzles. And, but to make it a little more modern, there's more of a focus on a story in this and also random generation, which I'll get into in a bit, um, to kind of bring it into a more modern era. Um, so about the random generation, um, no two gameplay playthroughs are the same. You, at the beginning of the game, it generates dialogue from a set of files um, and randomly assigns them to characters in the world. Uh, and the story itself is exposed differently every time you play it. Um, you learn different information sooner. You'll learn something in one playthrough you didn't in the last one. Um, so it really pushes you to play the game more than once to see everything you can. Um, so as I stated before, you have to make these tough decisions based on these limited choices. And the main thing we stressed was there is no right choice in the end. Um, you have to use people's opinions. Tr whether or not you want to trust them is kind of up to the player. There's no correct decision in the end. Um, based on what you do decide in the end, um, you'll get a different ending. But it's not necessarily right or wrong. It just affects the outcome of the situation. So um, we don't have a playthrough video, but is the next best thing. Um, when the player starts the game, they are just given this title, and uh, when they hit start, the game just begins. There's no introducing a cutscene or anything, and it kind of drops them right in the situation, which is the feeling we try to um, uh, pass on to the player with this game. Um, every, as Dungan said, all the rooms and people and information are randomly generated, so um, you may walk into an adjacent room and in one playthrough it looks like that, but in another it might be completely empty or there's a different person there or the same people are there with different information. Um, and you can talk with them, uh, you can ask them questions about information, you can uh, bring up specific topics or you can just, you know, see what's on their mind. And uh, it's, it kind of gets to be a lot of information and we didn't want to overwhelm the player so we gave them a handy little PDA. Um, it can keep track of everybody, both visually and by their official title, because the roles do matter. A civilian won't be giving you military information, and uh, you know, a general won't be talking about what he had for lunch. Um, you can keep track of where you are in this bunker. The bunker does not uh, randomly generate every time, um, but in future versions it may. Uh, we wanted to give the player a variety of rooms, so um, different experiences are kind of uh, made in each section of the game, not just the game as a whole. And uh, also with the information, you are able to look back on everything you've discovered through talking with people, and you can mark it as whether you think it's valid, you can't really trust it, or you think they're not telling the truth or just misinformed. And finally, you're brought to the button where you can either press it to retaliate with military action, or you can press the little glass cover to uh, shut it and uh, take the peaceful route. Um, so a little bit about the tech stuff that I worked on. I won't go into too much detail. Um, but all of the, as I mentioned, all of the dialogue and people 
are all loaded from XML files. So if somebody wanted to create a new story for this game, all they have to do is change these files and the game will dynamically load all of them and create conversations based on, those, on that information. Um, and you can, you can set information that the player will get when they talk to somebody and then set a question for that. And there's a lot of um, give and take that you can create just by simply changing one file and having the game be completely different. Um, so as what that allows for is anybody to come in and say, I really like this concept, I like the game, I want to create a new story, I have this idea. They just have to open up the files, change, change names, change words, and suddenly you have this whole new story that now anybody can enjoy again. So, um, technical achievements aside, we were really happy with uh, the feel of the game and its finished version. Um, because the player is just dropped into this scenario where they don't really know what's going on and they don't have a right or wrong answer, they're allowed to explore, but we make sure they can't explore everything in every playthrough. We want them to keep playing the game and keep experiencing these new stories and um, we think that with all the different mechanics and systems we finally developed in only five weeks, uh, it did a really good job and people want to play it once they play it the first time. Uh, and yeah, there's no winning or losing. Um, when a player makes a decision, it's more than just you attack when you should have or you shouldn't have or vice versa. Uh, we actually take into account how much information they had at the time. So if a player makes the correct decision but they didn't know why it was correct, they aren't rewarded. Um, and uh, in the final uh, kind of scene of the game, it's, um, it, it shows a newspaper, presumably months in the future, basically saying what actions were taken towards your nation based on your response. So it isn't game over you win, game over you lose, it's, you know, your nation doesn't trust you because even though you made the right decision, you took part in military action while you were uninformed or something along those lines. And um, even though there's no explicit reward system, players seem to really appreciate the kind of genuine feel that we conveyed. And um, yeah, part of the external files and the uh, kind of limited exploration, uh, our game is made to be played over and over. And uh, because players can create their own adventure, the possibilities are endless. Um, it might be an explosion in the capital one playthrough. It might be the president's dog ran away the next playthrough. Um, it's really an open system and we're really happy with how it turned out. And because it's such an open system, the players have to motivate themselves. Um, we don't tell them collect all these facts to win or get the right answer to win. It's basically enjoy the game to win, and uh, it really worked out. So, thanks. <laughs>